In today's video, I'm going to talk over some tournament wins, explaining exactly what we're doing, good and bad, and how you can learn from it to secure more success in the finals. A lot of this is targeted at beginners and those just getting the hang of the game, and if you're really new, I recommend checking out my beginners tips video linked above. So for these matches coming up, we have a pretty standard team comp, which is one light, one medium, one heavy. This is a really good one to start with. It's pretty strong. You've got complementary utilities that you can use if you're if you're on comms and you can plan together and I'll talk through that as we get into the gameplay. For my medium build I was running the F car. I know a lot of people wish this gun had more bullets and I was actually in the same boat particularly in the beta. I always found that AK was more reliable but actually I've committed to learning to use the F car and once you get used to the recoil control on this gun you can get a lot more kills because of the increased damage output and if you keep moving the reload is pretty quick so you can kind of reload and re-engage the fight if you're using cover if you're using your movement. So get comfortable with it, you can get a lot of kills and the scope really helps with those longer range engagements. For my utility I was running the heel beam and defibs. This is a must I believe for mediums, particularly if you're getting started out. Maybe you're playing solo with the teammates you can't communicate with. Being able to heal and res quickly is one of the best assets a team can have and it can be countered less easily than a turret for instance. Next I was using sonar grenades or a combination of either fire or frag grenades. Sonar is really a favourite part of one of my team comps but I'll go into that during the team play. So let's dive into the match and start to break down this gameplay. So we didn't get the first vault. Really, that doesn't matter. I'm never that bothered about the cash out initially. 10 grand isn't enough to win you around uh, by any means. If you get team wiped, you know, that gets dropped by 30%. But here you can see initially using that sonar grenade, we can see the different colors it's giving us. So we know that there's two teams in the point. So our plan now is to try and third party once this fight's kind of started getting going, once a few people have been knocked out. So I take the roof position. I always like to try and get high ground when possible and work my way down into a building. That way you're less likely to get impacted by things like fire and gas that's going off in the room. You can see they put a hole in here. So I make the call out to my team to get the glitch grenades in. We've got double shields. We know there's two tanks and that's going to be a real issue for us unless we can get rid of them. So the glitch grenade comes in, takes out the two shields. Now we push in. We've already got one killed. This guy's still got his main shield up, but we managed to get a lot of damage down, force him away from the point. Now the ta our tank will go for the point. This is always our strategy for the tank to try and take the secure. Unfortunately, it falls down and that kind of ruins our strategy here. I get killed. Purple come back in. So there are two teams in this fight. Purple come back in, get the kill on me and our tank. And that's kind of our push over and done with. We actually played that really well. It was a bit unlucky. Looking back on it, the best thing we could have done is slow play it when the point comes down rather than follow it down the hole again because we should know that there's probably going to be more players underneath us. Instead we drop down, you're not really sure where you're looking, you get shot in the back, you get killed, it's over. Now we have to completely reset because that time is gone and now it's time to focus on the next point, the next objective. So now again as we approach another vault, I get a sonar grenade in to give us some intel. We can see this person running in that building so I try and blow up the wall, completely fail at doing that. But now we know there's no one here, so I go for the quick steal and try and get out there to start our defense. But with two players down, it kind of falls apart quickly. My play now, now that we've got two players down, it's just to survive and avoid the team wipe. So I take the zip up to the top of the tower and just wait for them to leave. Good thing with the vaults is you can kind of slow play it. So a lot of the time if two of us get killed and the vault is secured by the other team, just wait, just be patient. They're going to run away and try and secure the objective. Now we can start to look at the scoreboard, so you can see purple and orange are going to get a huge lead at this point. Like if they both cash out, they're over 30k. It's going to be really hard to claw back with only one cash out remaining unless you're going super aggressive and getting some team wipes. So our mission here is to really, we have to stop one of these secures. Worst case scenario, we get pink or red, whatever that color is, to take it. So then it keeps us in the game for the last objective, but we can't let either of these teams get out of here with a win. So we go for the orange team, which is the easiest to attack as it's an exposed point. Our light gets a quick kill and then we immediately put pressure on them with throwables, fire, gas, everything we have, really pin them back and put, keep putting damage on them. And if you keep attacking, basically the objective here is to surround them. So I'm changing flanks, our tank's gone left, our light's gone right. There's not much they can do to get out of here. The, the, the biggest danger to us at the moment is the fact that everything is on fire. But as you can see, we eventually burn through them. I die, but we've still got two alive. And really the priority here is to get the steal. So if there's ever a decision between getting a steal and getting a res, make sure one of you goes for the steal. 
that is the most important thing particularly if you've got a team wipe don't waste time trying to get reses off get the steal and then you can worry about getting your teammates back into the game and now we get range what they really should have done is what we're doing now is not defend the point but defend from a distance so you can sit and provide overwatch and you only need to engage when another team gets close to it sitting on a point that's exposed like that you're asking to get attacked from throwables from rpgs all that sort of stuff but now we've got this point locked down we can start thinking about our next move this is going to put us into second place but we're by no means secure orange is still very much in the game so now that we're getting towards the end of the match there's one minute to go a little over one minute if a team puts a, uh, a cash out into a if a team puts a vault into a cash out, it will give a bonus minute, which is the last thing we want to do. Really, our focus now is just to harass the orange team who happen to be right in front of us, not get team wiped, but stop them from really being able to do anything with the objective. They're our main threat. Um, we don't do a great job of it because they do they do kill us. Um, we end up getting team wiped here, but orange also gets team wiped. So you can see they lose a bunch of money, which means that we're pretty much safe now um, for the end of the round and we just don't need to do anything there's only 30 seconds left no one's got an objective near a cash out so that is a qualification really it just came down to that one point capture ideally we'd have got a second one to give us some insurance it was a little bit tight so now we're into the second round we again don't get the first vault but we're in a good position overlooking point b and really our strategy here is to try and just get a quick pick and then we can be aggressive on the point but this team do a really good job of setting up defense with goo and with the shields we lose our light player across the other side of the map which is tricky in itself as he is the one with the glitch grenades who can really do the most damage we kind of get a bit flustered here and all in all we just we don't do enough i think that's one thing that a lot of teams fall into the trap of when you're attacking a point you've got to be decisive even if you lose the fight it's worth just pushing in there trying to cause a bit of chaos and seeing if you can get those kills and steal the point the more time you waste kind of running around just picking trying to pick them off from range probably just going to end up wasting your own time and really should just be decisive from the beginning we weren't and so we lose this point and have to move on to the next so here we're deciding what point we need to take so we got c and b d we need one of them um, D is the easiest point for us to attack as it's exposed on a roof. We can get more damage, hopefully get a pick on a player. C, it looked like it was kind of, it was in the building, it was more fortified. We can now also see that another team is coming for this point. That's even more reason for us to commit. We basically want to hang back, keep putting damage on. When the team on the left roof pushes in and we start to see kills go off, that's when we want to get into the mix and try and wrap it up for ourselves. So here are my players to get height above them so i'm ready to drop on top of them when we're we're ready to push in so you can see they're all now kicking off on the roof now is the perfect time really for us to get in there we get a quick pick and then we dive in again the focus here for me is to get the healer i don't want to target the tank it doesn't matter that they're stealing that's irrelevant for us we get the healer out now the tank's vulnerable he's got no support he gets me but we're still two against one And then our light player cleans it up. But unfortunately, unfortunately, he slides to get onto the point and then falls down the stairwell, which is utterly tragic. And now in the time it takes for him to get back up there, he gets killed and our players can't be back on the roof. It's frustrating, similar to the first round where we did a pretty perfect execution of an attack on the point. It then, through luck or through happenstance, we're kind of out at the point. And now with a minute and 15 seconds left, we are, you would assume, out of this game. Um, and I actually think I say on the comms, so I'm pretty much like, GG's, this game is over. I'm just trying to get kills now. So at this point, our squad mate calls out with 30 seconds left, 35 seconds left. Orange have actually started a vault and they're not that far away from a cash out. And so our strategy now is to help Orange, which seems strange because they're bottom of the table, but we need them to put the cash out in because it will give us an extra minute and we also know theoretically they're the weakest team so they should be the easiest for us to push so now that is our objective to get over there i'm kind of still wasting time oh, we've got an extra minute, right? we've got to rush it. it takes me a minute yeah, to actually we realize that we're we going to get this extra minute but now we go full send i get the sonars in to get some intelligence to the rest of the team on where they are so we see that there's one there's two of them in the building get the pyro grenade inside start getting the damage on them and then I go for the steal. The tank comes in with me to body block. This is a really strong strategy. 
a lot of people will focus on the tank because he's the bigger target. And now it's just about trying to stay alive and defend the point for the next 30 seconds. Because uh, currently we will now have enough money to push out purple who now come and send it on us because they know they have to get this point back. But all the teams are now des descending onto this point which is good for us because it's just going to be pure chaos in there. My, my strategy now is just to hide and stay alive until someone can test the point. Unfortunately, I get flanked from behind and killed. But that's not bad for us because, like I said, every team is here now. It's going to be really hard for anyone to try and steal it because everyone's just fighting over the point. And as you can see, we hold on to it. And purple go from second place and we go to first place. So don't... The message there is really don't give up on a round until it's done and helping teams secure a cash out is sometimes works in your favor. So we make it through to the final round against the pink team who we actually haven't fought that much in this match so we don't know that much about them. So when you head into the final round it's really important to make note of what the theme of the map is. So as you can see here it says suspended structures. That means it's the hanging point, which suits us because we have the tank in our team as well. So we can, between our tank player and our light player, we can bring those structures down. They've got the same composition as us, so there's not much we can really do about that. And here as we push to the point is a really good example of the use of the sonar grenades. We know the other team's going to be coming from exactly opposite us, so I immediately throw a sonar in and it immediately gives us intelligence on where they are. I throw another sonar closer to where they are to keep giving us that information and we're able to push the fight here. Now our main priority here is to try and get a quick team wipe. The reason behind that is not obviously for monetary value as that doesn't come into it in the final round, but getting that team wipe will mean that we get an extra 20 seconds to get to the cash out, get our defenses set up, and give us the best opportunity of getting the first cash out and getting 10 grand closer to the final win. So now the defensive strategy on these uh, suspended structures is pretty simple. Knock down the zip lines and then spread yourselves out a little bit. So what we do, we immediately destroy the connecting zip lines to the other platforms. If you really wanted to, you could destroy the other platforms. What we tend to do is have the heavy and myself, the medium, on the main point. That means we can support each other if someone dives up there. And then we use our light character or our third player to be kind of a roaming distraction. Someone who can poke at them from different angles, potentially get a couple of kills, that kind of thing, to stop them from being able to really group up. Again, I use the sonars here to try and get pings on where, they're exa where they are so they can't peek us. Particularly on a dark map like this, it's really useful having that bright colored ping so you can spot them. Our, our main focus here really is to keep them at as much of a distance as possible. And really, I have to talk about this team attacking us. They don't, they frankly don't do a very good job. They have a heavy with an RPG, we know that, but he doesn't do anything to try and knock down the main structure. Their priority now, sh above everything else, should be trying to get the point onto the floor so it's a free for all. Instead, they kind of poke at us from different angles. They do eventually set up a zip line to try and get across to us, but it's all very sporadic. The priority with a suspended structure like this is to get it on the ground, unless you have a jump pad which you can all jump up on or you all come across on a zip line at the same time it's going to be much easier for you because the defending team is always an advantage if they stay up on the point so this kind of plays out as you would expect from what i've said they kind of they poke at us they never get a kill and actually we get the second vault and we're able to do exactly the same thing again so as you can see we now have the second point secured on a suspended structure again the team attacking team doesn't try anything different which is very strange i'm not sure if they were on comms or not maybe they weren't maybe they weren't sure that they could take down the structure what i'll actually say is if if they did take the structure down our strategy would probably be to spread out so we'd keep the tank close to the point i'd probably stick with the tank and then similar to how we're set up here we'd probably send the light as like a roving distraction and then just attack the point when they attack the point, if that makes sense. A lot of our defense is based around basically don't do anything until someone starts stealing and then you crash the point and start putting as much damage onto the point as possible. Standing too close to the point will oftentimes get you killed and get you team wiped. So we like, I definitely advocate for playing kind of a ranged defense. Obviously, if you're defending in a building, it's a little bit trickier to do that. But staying close enough so that you can dive the point when you need to, but not being too close that you're going to get killed by all the grenades and shit that come flying at you is a really smart strategy. So this is probably one of the easiest final round wins we've had, particularly considering how chaotic the two rounds previous to this were. This team just weren't 
coordinated enough to take us down. By the end, they were just throwing themselves at the point, which made it even easier for us. Really, if you're going to dive the point like that, you need to have numbers. Doing it one at a time is never really going to work unless you're a great player. But we get the win, and we actually get the win in the next tournament, which I'm not going to show. Very similar fashion. The final round was suspended structures. Again, the team didn't knock down the suspended structures, didn't really do anything to try and counter us. But that's it for this video. That was me playing as a medium with my squad. If you'd like to see more of this, let me know in the comments down below and drop the video a like for the algorithm, and I'll be back soon with more content. Cheers.